Solving problems on the photoelectric effect can be a little tricky, so I'm going to help you out with some of those. And then we'll get into de Broglie wavelength and how it turns out that even things that have mass, like electrons, actually are also waves, sort of the opposite of the photoelectric effect. Here's a past IB question related to photoelectric effect. Take a minute and pause it and see if you can pa uh, solve part A of this. Now the answer uh, that I typed up, boom, is this one here. Uh, and now, just to emphasize, pause it, read it, see if it makes sense. Hopefully you wrote something similar. Uh, but the way, this is a four-point question, the way that things would probably be divided is here. I'm stating something about photon as a packet with energy determined by frequency. Then probably for the next point, uh, we're saying that uh, you need a certain amount of energy to overcome that work function to knock the electron off. The next point, probably I'm talking that red light has a low frequency, and thus it can't, doesn't have the energy to, do, to knock the electrons off. And here I'm saying that UV has a high frequency, and it can. Here's the second part of this problem. Pause it and see what you can do to solve it. The first part where it's saying uh, to complete the graph, that's not very hard. Uh, anyone can look at this graph and see it's clearly linear. So just put yourself a straight line better than I'm doing through there. And so that's that part. That's easy. And then it's saying um, to find these values, like find the threshold frequency. That is what you might know as f sub 0, and that's the lowest frequency that you can have where you still get electrons emitted with a certain energy. Or here, this is the stopping potential needed to keep those electrons from flying from the uh, positive over to the negative. And so this frequency here is our threshold, and I estimated that as something like 0 0.6 times 10 to the 15th hertz. Then it says to find uh, Planck's constant. Uh, now to do that, you might have remembered that the slope uh, will tell you Planck's constant, but that is the slope if you have energy or EV uh, versus frequency. And here we don't quite have that. We have a voltage or a stopping potential. But still, take the slope of this line and you'll find that I find this slope to be something like 4.6 times 10 to the negative 15th. It's got the weird units of volts per hertz. But if you break this down, you can find that this is the same thing as a joule second per coulomb. Now this isn't the right units for Planck's constant. Planck's constant is in just this joules per second. So if you take this value and you multiply it by the charge on an electron, uh, which you can see should be right there, is 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19th coulombs. Coulombs goes to weigh, and you end up with a value of something like about 7.4 times 10 to the negative 34th joule seconds. Now that might be close enough to Planck's constant which is about 6.6 .6 times 10 to the negative 34th. Close enough. And then it wants to know the work function. That's easy. The work function is this difference here. And so you just read what this value is. And when I drew that line a little bit better, I got a work function of something about 2.6 electron volts. Or in other words, that's the minimum amount of energy a photon packet would need to knock an electron off of whatever particular metal this is. It was a little bit crazy when Einstein was saying that all photons, that previously they were thinking of as waves, have to be also thought of as particles at the same time. Then de Broglie comes along and kind of vice versa, says, well, things that have mass and clearly are particles, can we also think of them as waves? turns out we can. But de Broglie's uh, 
hypothesis stating, or his idea, is that all matter things have a wavelength, and that they're determined that wavelength by Planck's constant, right here, and its momentum. And this is clearly its wavelength. Well, clearly, but it is. And now for most things that, that are macroscopic, this wavelength would be incredibly tiny because Planck's constant, as you know, is crazy small, times 10 to the negative 34th, really small number. And that's on the numerator. If anything is macroscopic, its momentum is sizable, and that's going to help to make the wavelength really, really tiny. Uh, but once you get into really tiny particles like electrons, this can become noticeable. Now what this leads to is that things like electrons uh, have a sorry, wave dash particle duality, meaning that an electron is so small that even though it has mass, it's sort of on the borderline. Sometimes acts like a wave, sometimes acts like a particle. The using the de Broglie wavelength equation is really quite easy, but understanding how this was finally proven in an experiment uh, is a little bit more interesting. Uh, in the uh, 1920s sometime, uh, they came with a clever experiment where they heated these things up and that gave off an electron beam, and by using a voltage difference they made those electrons go zing and go flying towards the same crystal. Now this crystal acted like a double slit, like in your double slit interference patterns that you would see with light and with lasers. And these electrons, which are matter, and they are particles, they went through here and then they hit this fluorescent screen and they made these concentric circles. And what these showed was that there was interference because they were acting like waves. And so the crazy thing is that one electron would interfere with another electron and they would act like there was no electron because of the way they interfered. And so you had constructive interference between two particles where you see the lines and where you see nothing, the electrons were actually canceling each other out. It's almost like if you met up with your bizarro twin and you canceled each other out so that you didn't exist at one particular spot. And so that's the crazy thing, these electrons that have mass are able to cancel each other out, just like light. What I think is even more interesting is in more modern times, they're able to take a bigger molecule, a buckyball, which I think is 60 carbon atoms stuck together, and sh fire those through a double slit type apparatus and even make those big molecules uh, interfere and act like they're not there, which is a bizarre effect of quantum and nuclear mechanics.